Well, there's, here's the roommate situation. Yeah. Okay, so we got an apartment. We got a two-bedroom. You know, you're two doors apart, right? You, you, you're trying to save dough. Right? Yeah. 1500 You want to get 750 out of somebody. Totally. And you got, like, a girl in there or a friend of yours in there, you know, and they party or whatever the fuck. See, that's where it ends bad. Yeah. You know, if you you're don't right, party absolutely. right now, let's pretend I got a house. I got a three-bedroom fucking house. I got a back room in the back. And I know that Dean is struggling as a comic. You know, 500, as long as you clean the kitchen, Dean, listen, do me a favor. You're not going to see me. Yeah. Unless you hunt me down on the other side of the fucking crib. Yeah. And you have your own garage and you have weights. As long as you clean up and all that shit, I don't give a fuck, man. Yeah. It's the people who you walk downstairs and they're smoking in your living room. Oh, and there's yeah. three strangers in your living room and they got beer bottles and you see the foot and you know they're about to kick the fucking beer bottle. That's in, exactly what I'm a, talking and about. And it's got a cigarette butt in it, oh. which is disintegrated. And you know, you know, that shit, look at how I tell you. I describe the situation. Exactly. To you I don't want to be a part of that. Yeah. I don't want to be a part of that shit. Yep. I've lived on couches. People always extended fucking courtesies to me growing up, you know. But when I had a roommate situation, he was cooler than fuck. His name yeah. was Jimmy Burkle, God rest his soul. We lived together two or three times, and there was never, I never, I would never bring somebody over. Yeah. Like, I would never, he had a girlfriend, he would go to her house. Yeah, that's where we're I would talking go about. somewhere over there. That kind of shit, right? You know, you leave town, he watches the dog. He leaves town, you watch the dog. Yeah. There's always some fucking thing to do. That's a great, he's a professional, you're a professional, everybody pays their rent. Yeah. Nobody's doing blow, or at least they do blow, they do it once a week in their room. Yeah. Shit like that is fun, you know? Sometimes totally. to come home and to talk to somebody for 10 minutes, it's kind of fun, oh, especially if they're not a comic. Right. It's great. It never worked for me. I didn't have that many of them. I only did, you're right, I never had a roommate out here. Um, but in, when I had roommates, if they weren't my friend, it was great. Right. Like 10 minutes saying hi, maybe watch a TV show together, have some dinner. But when I moved in with people who I knew... That's when you're fucked. It ended up in, in hate. They start pushing buttons. They know they can get away with stuff. Like, oh, man, why are you so uptight or whatever? That kind of shit. That starving roommate shit. Unless everybody's cool and on the same page, yeah, it never works. It's yep. great for a while until somebody, a friend of theirs moves yeah. in. Yeah. And then your shit starts to miss. Your shirts are disappearing. Totally. And you're like, fuck. Yep. Now I got to smack a motherfucker. That's a bad situation. I, I've, listen, I, I was a single. I was an only child. I had like my own bedroom growing up with my own TV, stereo, remote control, yeah. had a cable in my room, I had an air conditioner in my room. All that ended when my mom died. Now I had to sleep on a bed with a guy. Yeah. When I lived with John Bender. We had a double bed. <laughs> we slept together. Two 16 year old, like two fucking fags with the yeah. window open yeah. and shit. Yeah. You know what that's like? That was that was against my whole culture in oh, 16 yeah. years. Then I slept on couches. Then I went to fucking prison. Then I got like a fucking apartment. I, I didn't get an apartment on my own until I was like fucking 20. Yeah. I went to Boulder. I got my first fucking apartment, which was basically a room with a mattress, a Walkman. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. What, yeah. I got a TV after a while. I got cable. But besides, I didn't know nothing about fucking nothing. I had been sleeping on couches all my fucking life. And yeah. Shit. I'm a, I am lived in a warehouse with uh, another band member where we rehearsed. So I, I lived in the office of the warehouse and then he built like a wooden loft inside the studio and he slept in there. But he would, he would do a little fucking marching powder and just fucking practice guitar all night. Not plugged in, but I could still hear it. It'd just be like... Ding, 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 ding. And after like four hours, I was like, dude, man, you got to fucking stop. You know what you I mean? You could hear him? Yeah, because it was really quiet in the warehouse at night. You know, we lived in an industrial era, and you could just hear it picking, just, and he would just try to learn stuff, Metallica, you know, just like that low. But I would have to get up working construction at like six in the morning, and I'd be like, dude, you know? And then this stuff just wears on you, man. It's just like, it's tough, man. I mean, it's like, you know, it's uh, it's stupid complaining about it. And with me, guess who my worst roommate was who? of all time? Yeah. My mom. Oh. No class. Oh, your mom. No class. <laughs> no class. No respect. Oh. We had just this conversation the other night, Lee, I, and my friend. No respect. 
no class. Actually woke me up when I was 14 with a girl downstairs. Come down <laughs> and meet her, dance with her, that type of shit. Yeah. My mom would knock on the door and go, no, there's people downstairs. They want to come down, dress up, come down. I would come down, have to talk to people. Four in the morning, they'd oh. be all fucking coked up and yeah. shit. I'd be giving out hugs. They'd be giving me 20s and shit. <laughs> My mom would bring me like a Cuban sandwich from the uh, Cuban place down the corner. And then the, she was rude. Yeah. Or she would cook. At four in the morning, people come over and she go. Loud laughing. Loud, loud, loud music. Yeah. Rude. My yeah. mother was rude. Fucking. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, I went home about, not this time, like maybe three times ago, three, four years mm -hmm. ago, I went home and I went to see a, a person that had grown up around the house. And she goes, you know, when I think about your mother, I think of one night, like in 1970. She goes, my kids were fucking young. You know, she goes young. They were like 14, 11, 8. And he goes, I heard my husband, Renee, your mom and your stepdad come into my house. And your mom's tone in her voice, she thought it was one in the afternoon. Oh, yeah, right. She goes, that, and he goes that's the night I understood your mom. Like, I always liked your mom because she didn't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. Like she just didn't give a fuck. I had the same scene, man. A lot, I, I a lot of late night that. parties at my oh. house, you know. Just Carol King on Sunday morning, you know. <laughs> That, that meant the all night bender was over, the Boone's Farm and the fucking oh. Colombian weed and the fuck, you know what I mean? Just the. I remember my mom, we lived in this house, man, and uh, my mom had, she had a, a, another woman living with us. The woman died in a fucking Corvette car crash, drunk driving. This chick named Cindy. But we had like a roommate. You know what I mean? Like an adult. My mom had an adult roommate. Like, you know, so it was like another person living at our house because we were just, we, you know, needed to make ends meet.